Hey there, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to do fourth axis indexed milling in Kiribato in cam mode. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that we're in the uh, CNC cam mode. And the next thing that we're going to do, which is new, is go to stock and say indexed. And a couple of interesting things happen. Platform disappears, and so you can only see the primary axes, the x-axis and the y-axis. If you really want to see the grid, you can enable that here. But for the purposes of indexed fourth axis milling, we'd like to see the part without much clutter. You can see the origin up here on the left hand side that can be moved as in any other mode uh, or even uh, down here. Depends on what your machine wants. But uh, for the purposes of, in this case, we're using the Carvera, it wants the end, uh, zero origin for the Z to be right on the axis. So that's what we're going to do here. The next thing you'll notice is that there's this new timer icon here, and that allows us to slide things back and forth and enable to disable things on a timeline. So let's try something really quick here, adding a roughing operation. The timeline is to the left of the roughing operation. So if I slice, nothing's going to happen. Move it to the right. You've got your roughing operation right there. And the next operation, which is new in index mode, is the index operation. And that is only available when the stock is in indexed mode. And this will index the part around the x-axis. Let's move the timeline to the right of index and say, let's rotate that, say, 45 degrees. And when we do that, you'll see that the part rotates 45 degrees. For the purposes of the thing that I want to mill today, I actually want to just mill each face individually. So we're gonna do something a little bit less interesting. And we're just going to mill one side and then mill the next. So here you'll notice that after we slice it, uh, it's showing the 90 degree slice. If I move this back, it'll slice, but then not index it. So the process of roughing all the sides is really just adding rough index, rough index in that order. So I can just add this three more times, and I can also add in the index operation three more times and then move them around to the right places. So rough index, rough index, rough index. And then for this, we're just going to change these to the right rotations. Move this timeline to the end, slice it, and you'll see that we have one from each side. And each of these is only going down as you'll notice, halfway through. By default, the Z bottom limit is zero, which is here. You can change that if you want. And then you'll see the typical Z bottom indicator there. We're not gonna use that in this case. We're just gonna go down to the axis. So that's pretty easy. The other thing that's sort of trick here is that um, you can't really put a tab in here for cutting this out. So once it gets to the end, the part's gonna fall out. So I thought a nice little trick for that would be to place this face down right there and then rotate the part such that I could put a tab here on the side. And what I do then is just rotate it 90 degrees on the Y axis. So if I go that to rotate like 90 on the Y, then we have this nice area here where I can put a tab in. So if I go into tabs, make sure it's midline so it shows right up on that face. Put a tab here and a tab here. And now when I slice that, you'll see that it avoids that area on the cutout. So go to all of them. And now I'm milling these faces with the tab cutout. So when this thing is done, I can just sort of pop it out of the stock. This isn't really gonna provide us a very high quality cut because these are just roughing operations. So really what I wanna do is add something like a contour operation. So let's go through and pull the timeline back and see what just roughing and contouring looks like in this context. And that looks a little bit better. I can turn off the roughing if I just wanna see the contouring. So if I do this on each side, a roughing and a contouring operation on each side, I should have a pretty uh, interesting final cut. So. Let's go ahead and add three more contour operations and set these back to X because by default, when it detects contour on the timeline, 
it's going to try to put the other version back in there. We actually don't need this final index, but we do, we should put it at the beginning because you never know if your machine is indexed properly at the very beginning of a job. Just checking, there we go. So let's put it to the end and then just slice the whole thing and see what it looks like. Nice, so if I turn off the roughing, I can look just the contour operations. That looks like it's gonna give us something interesting. It's not really gonna go all the way through the center there since it's not possible, but the, uh, the output should look pretty interesting. So let's take that back to the mill and mill this thing and see what we get. Did make a couple of mistakes with the uh, location of this within the stock and the stock size, but I think it turned out all right. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and hope it was useful for you and your projects. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the forums and in Discord.